So let's rank all the films I rewatched for the month of September 2023. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Duol, better known to as the Big D, back again with another ranking. Today I'm going to be ranking all the films I rewatched during the month of 2025. This is going to be a 25 films. I did watch a few hours, and those were some of the Halloween films. However, I'm excluding those, as those will be shown on the Spooktacular October re Spooktacular Rewatches ranking, which I'm doing outside of the regular rewatches. If I do a non-horror rewatches uh, and what have you next month. So I humbly apologize, but I'm just going to do 25, excluding the Halloween films. But however, you will see some horror flicks on this ranking. So if you're ready, let's start the ranking. Sit back, relax, and here we go. And P.S., I'm going to go rapid fires, so I'll be doing the first 20 by showing the pictures, and then I'll be back to give you the final five. Here we go. Number 25 is Psycho, 1998. Yeah, the dull, bland, shot-for-shot -shot remake of the classic film, which we'll see where the original winds up. Eh, it's alright after re-watching it, but it's still not that great, though. I plan to review this film later on. Number 24 is RoboCop 3 from 1993. Now, this got a PG-13 ring, and, well, the film's all right. It's not really the best of the trilogy, though. Check out my review of this that I did earlier this month if you haven't seen it yet. Number 23 is The Good Son from 1993. Now, I recently did a review of this earlier this week. If you haven't seen it yet, check it out. This is a pretty underrated psychological thriller with Macaulay Culkin and Elijah Wood. It's not that bad. Number 22 is Child's Play 2019. This is, well, it's an okay film. I mean, while it does have some pretty bloody kills and what have you, I do have a soft place for it, but it's not really much of my favorite of the Child's Play series, though. Number 21 is Robots from 2005. This is Blue Sky Studios' second film after Ice Age. I still like him, have you? Though it's been a long time since I last saw it. Check out my review of this if you haven't seen it yet. It has a pretty good all-star cast of voices. Number 20 is The Expendable Street. Sorry about that. From 2014. Now, I do have mixed feelings for this film. I still haven't seen the more better unrated cut of this film. Hopefully I'll find it one day. The film's fine and why have you with a bigger all-star cast, but yeah, it's missing all the great blood and gore and why have you we got from the first two films, which we'll see where those wind up. This film so far has gotten a lot of views. Check it out if you haven't seen my review of it. Number 19 is Masters of the Universe from 1987. A pretty underrated superhero fantasy adventure flick. Dolph Lundgren isn't too bad, Ski Man, and why have you. Check out my review of this if you haven't. This film, my review of this has been doing so well. Please feel free to check this my review of this out. It's fine, and why have you. It's just that it was missing a whole lot of great characters from the great toy line in the M8 series itself. Number 18 is the takeout Pelham 123 from 1974. This is the original classic itself, which I liked. And what have you, Walter Matthau, Robert Shaw, Hector Elizondo, and others. This film is pretty good. I definitely should review this one day. Maybe next year for its anniversary. Who knows? Number 17 is The Transporter from 19... Not 19, 2002. I got too far back. My apologies. Jason Stam's pretty awesome in this. This has some pretty good action, and I think it's pretty cool. Check out my review of this if you haven't. Seen it yet. Number 16 is Ernest Goes to Camp from 1987. Very funny movie. I love this film. The first full-length feature film to star the late great Jim Varney as his alter ego of a country bumpkin, Ernest P. Worrell. Absolutely zany and funny. Love it. Number 15 is Crank from 2006. Now, I haven't seen this film in a long time. Now, I was going to do it for... Well, 
and well, well, layer films of it if I was done with the transport for Jason for my Jason Samway, but I, fortunately I failed to find out which streaming service it was on. But anyway, revisiting this film is absolutely awesome. I definitely need to review this film sometime or sooner. But it's free action pad Jason Stam is awesome. Number 14 is Casper from 1995. Still a very funny, spectacular experience featuring everyone's favorite friendly ghost from out of the pages of Harvey Comics. Still love this film. Great voice acting and great performances from Bill Pullman and Christina Ricci. Number 13 is Transporter 3 from that, from 2008. Once again, Jason Sam's awesome in this in this series and what have you. I really thought it was pretty good after giving it a second time watch. I hadn't seen this since I ran it on DVD years back. If you haven't seen my review of this film, check it out. Number 12 is Happy Death Day to You from 2019. It's a pretty good sequel. We'll see where its predecessor winds up. But it's pretty funny, even if it does have more of a sci-fi feel than a horror feel to its story and what have you. Number 11 is the Little Mermaid remake from this past summer. After rewatching on Disney Plus, it's still as good as I remember. I know I don't, a lot of people are mixed on this, and I'm understanding and what have you, alright? Enough said. Number 10 is The Expendables from 2010. This is a pretty awesome, badass, macho flick and what have you, with a good cast and what have you. If you have not seen my review of this film, check it out. Again, it's pretty awesome. Number 9 is Fast X, which was also released earlier this summer. Now, after rewatching when it premiered on Peacock earlier this month, I will say it was a little more fun the second time around. I know this kept left us, well... I better not tell you. If you haven't seen my spoiler-free review of this film, you need to check it out. But it's still a pretty good film. Number 8 is Transporter 2 from 2005. Now, I like this a little more than the first one, but you don't have to take my word for it. It's pretty fun, and Jason seems good. I just say this was just so much fun. Check out my review of it if you haven't seen it yet. Number 7 is The Expendables 2 from 2012. I love this movie. This is my favorite of The Expendables films. With an even bigger cast and Jean-Claude Van Damme as the villain. Who could go wrong with this one? Again, it's my favorite. Check out my review of this if you have yet to see it. Number 6 is Happy Death Day from 2017. I love this movie. This is absolutely good. I felt like watching it. So this is one time where I'd watch this Outside of my birthday and what have you. I really love this movie. It's absolutely really funny. And I like its premise. Make it feel like it's you're watching Groundhog Day all over again. <laughs> well, there you go. Uh, that didn't take too long to pow boost, power boost through 20 films and what have you. Now I'm going to give you the final five with quick thoughts and what have you. I hope, I'm glad you're still with me, and I hope you've been enjoying this ranking so far. But anyway, this next set is the Final Five, and boy, let me tell you, it's more horror than it is comedy, action, or I don't know, what have you. And this might be have some surprises, or well, who knows. Well, let's get started. Coming in at number five is... Psycho 3. From 1986. Now, I know most people are mixed on the sequels to the great classic, which this is still ahead, and the second one as well. Anyway, I feel like it's a little underrated, but even so, it's pretty suspenseful and pretty bloody and what have you. Anthony Perkins did an exceptionally good job in playing Norman Bates again, and not only that, he directed the film. I think that was a pretty good job for him as well. Now, I recently saw in um a video from my horror fanatic friend, Christian Hanna, of course, that's on Planet CHH. He revealed, he kind of revealed to us that he had um, a big box set of 4K Ultra HDs. I don't have a player for those, but 
Arrow Video recently released a Psycho movie collection, which be thankful only has the four Anthony Perkins films. That 1998 remake, oh, nowhere. No, sir. And be thankful for that. Anywho, I'm, well, I was surprised, although it's only in the U available only in the UK, but I've read it, it's also going to come to Blu-ray. We'll hope for the best it'll come to the US, but who knows. Anyway, Psycho 3, it's pretty good. Now, coming in at number four is... Mrs. Doubtfire from 1993. Now, I've already reviewed this film, and this film recently celebrated its 30th anniversary. Robin Williams is exceptionally funny and what have you. I also like the kids, Sally Field, Pierce Brosnan. They were all real good and what have you. This is definitely one of my absolute favorite films of the late, great Robin Williams. And what can I say? It's still as fun as I can remember and what have you. So anyway... Mrs. Doubtfire, you can't go wrong with this film. Mm -mm. No, ma'am. Now, coming in at number three is... The Original Psycho from 1960. Love this film. You can't go wrong with it. Anthony Perkins is great. So is the cast. I mean, you can't go wrong with the shower kill, but um, the air kill you see of... Um, the private detective Arbogast. Sorry. I agree with a lot of people. It's not that great, though. But anyway, I still love this movie. It's one of Alfred Hitchcock's greats, and you cannot, I repeat, you cannot go wrong with a film like Psycho. Now, again, I am going to review that remake and what have you, but that'll, that won't be coming up, up for another month or two and what have you. I believe November is when I'm going to do it, so stay tuned. This probably won't, that probably won't take as long as I did with the others and what have you. But the original Psycho is absolutely a masterpiece. I do love it. And coming in, number two is... My number one favorite film of the first half of this year so far, Megan. Yes... After I kind of excluded off some of my other rewatches ranking, because I didn't want to include it on every month's rewatch ranking all the time, but I decided to put it on this one since I've watched it over a dozen times already since it's released earlier this year. I'm sorry, y'all. I can't get enough of this film. Megan is just such a classic and what have you. You can't go wrong. You can check out my review of it if you haven't already, because that's been so far been the most watched video on my channel this year so far. Believe me, it skyrocketed in so many views in no time that I had anticipated. Such a great film. I really loved Megan, and it's just a great one. But if Megan is in second, what's number one? Well, you're about to be prepared for this. Coming in at number one, my number one rewatch favorite film I rewatched in September of 2023 is Psycho 2 from 1983. Now, I have started to like this just a little bit more than the first one, but again, you don't have to take my word for it. This film is very good and what have you. And not only that, the direction of the uh, the film was fine. Anthony Perkins was absolutely great as Norman Bates. I liked some the, the few of the new characters and what have you. And but it was Jerry Goldsmith's score that really made it a perfect masterpiece in ways. Maybe not as much as a masterpiece as the other, the original, but it comes close though. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I watched this in number three twice on Peacock. Since I don't have them on DVD or Blu-ray, but hey, I'm just glad that they're out there and I know I'm found some place to watch these films. They're just so good. So that's gonna do it. That is my rewatches ranking for September 2023. What did you think of this ranking? What films did you watch in September 2023? Leave me your, you can give me your number one pick, maybe your top three or top five. You be the judge. And, and feel free to leave them for me in the comment section below. If you like the video, click the like button. 
subscribe and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you my Saturday morning TV log of, well, a rare gem of a Saturday morning cartoon history, Galaxy High School, which I just recently finished watching today. So anyway, if you like this, you may want to consider checking out my reviews for some of these films that actually made it onto this ranking. In the upper left-hand corner is my spoiler-free review of Megan. The upper right-hand corner is my review of The Expendables 3, which has already become one of the most viewed vids on the channel. And just in case y'all still haven't seen the time to watch it, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my previous video, which is the review of Masters of the Universe. In the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.